Yeah, well, Christine is from Church Militant. Uh, they are basically kindred spirits with us here at Virgin Most Powerful. That's for sure. And, and I call Church Militant the, I call them the uh, Internal Affairs of the Catholic Church and the Special Crimes Unit of the Catholic Church. Christine, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Great to be here. Great to see you guys again. Of course, I saw you all in Baltimore last week, so it was wonderful to see both of you. God bless you. Well, let's Christine. talk about the news. What's going on, Christine? Yeah, you've got three things tonight. You I love talk it, about, especially right? with Cardinal Pell. He's my friend, man. I love that guy. Let's hear about it. Wow. Yeah, uh, everything that Cardinal Pell has been through. Well, <laughs> he is warning about the Vatican facing major financial catastrophe. Now, if you recall, before he was sent off to prison and falsely convicted, yeah. and then he got off for that, he was the Vatican finance czar. He was trying very hard to clean up corruption especially Vatican financial corruption in the church. And then in the middle of that, he's hauled off, yes. sent to prison. But he's been warning about Vatican spending. And he says basically that the Vatican has been overspending for at least the past 10 years. And just this year alone, they're facing a $60 million deficit. And of course, that comes on the heels of this major Vatican fraud investigation over that scandalous London property deal, if you all recall, it was that London apartment that they purchased mm -hmm. for a lot of money from Peter's Pence, oh, God. which was the, the, is the Pope's charity, which is supposedly supposed to be for the poor. Ugh. That's how it markets itself, and that's yes. why people donate. But they spent hundreds of millions of dollars purchasing this uh, upscale London apartment, and now that they have to sell it off, they're going to lose more than $100 million. So he's just warning about this horrible financial, uh, you know, misspending by officials in the Vatican. Amazing. Can I just give a plug to his book? Because he's going to be on our show, uh, George Pell's Prison Journal, Volume 3. I've been reading it. And, you know, he's, he's a, a cardinal after my own heart. I had time with him uh, before he was uh, the archbishop. But the point I'm making is, you go to someone who's suffered much. He has suffered much, and he should know all these things because he works so long in Rome. And I really appreciate him speaking out on this because the time for being quiet is over. We have to speak the truth now. He's doing that. Yeah, and I believe the third volume of his book has just come out, and that's where he focuses on the financial corruption. Yep, I got yeah. it right here. That's great. What else do we have going on, Christine? For so another story we're going to cover tonight um, is Joe Biden. Oh, boy. <laughs> appealing, <laughs> appealing the blocking of his unconstitutional vaccine mandate, uh, the one that he's trying to impose now on private businesses all over the country, will affect many, many, many millions of Americans. And a, a couple of weeks ago, the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court came to the right decision. They did. Uh, it blocked the mandate. It said that basically, in its words, the mandate is staggering in its breadth and scope, that it doesn't take into account any of the differences in workplaces, the fact that some people might have natural immunity and therefore don't need the vaccine mandate. And, you know, it doesn't respect the medical yeah. decisions, personal medical decisions of Americans. Well, so Steve, right now he's trying to appeal that. Yeah. I have a feeling yeah, this what, will make it to the U.S. Supreme Court eventually. Because so. it's just too important a case not to. And my prediction will be that the conservative majority will strike it down as unconstitutional. Well, I hope so. That's my prayer. And, and that, uh, that will obviously affect all 50 states if that happens. Right now, Christine, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal, is, is this national or is this only for certain states in the country? Well, the Fifth Circuit covers the territory of, of the Fifth Circuit, which is kind of south, southwest. Mm -hmm. right. um, so it's... it's it applies specifically to that jurisdiction. But because there are other federal circuits that are also ruling on this, there may be a split in the circuits, and eventually it will go up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and then that will apply nationally. Got it. Unbelievable. You know, this you know OSHA, I don't know if you know this, but no. there was a media blackout. In response to the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court um, ruling, OSHA actually halted the mandate. So that's now suspended for wow, the moment. Wow, I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Good. Good. So, so OSHA is complying with the Fifth Circuit, right? It is, yeah, yeah, but, it is. But, but, so Biden, right now. but Biden's not complying, right? Is that is that a correct first statement? He's he's appealing it, you know. So okay. he doesn't like the ruling, so now he's appealing it. Got it, got it. Christine, tell us about uh, the foreign border crossers. What's going on over there, and what do we need to be alerted to? 
Well, more hypocrisy from the Biden administration. So currently, as you know, many illegal immigrants jumping the border from Mexico mm -hmm. are not required to show any proof of vaccination, not required to get vaccinated, nothing. <laughs> but now the new rule for foreign, uh, foreign citizens from Canada or Mexico who are um, essential workers, let's say truck drivers, um, you know, emergency responders, people crossing the border for legitimate reasons, mm -hmm. they now have to show proof of vaccination. So they're held to a higher standard yeah. than these illegal immigrants jumping the border, breaking the rules. Yeah, so line, yet more hypocrisy. My line is what's good for the goose is good for the gander, but not with this administration. Christine, right. is it true? I read this. You guys are on top of this. That the Biden, Biden said it himself, that he plans to re a run for the presidency in two more, three more years when it's time. This guy has the audacity to say that he's going to run again. I mean, I'm just shocked that he would. It seems like he doesn't have reality going on, and his 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 uh, you know points for people agreeing with him are way down. His approval rating is down. It's just a total mess. And I'm just well, you know, go ahead. Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. No, I I think many people are questioning his grasp of reality yeah, <laughs> as well you think? as facts. Yes, yes. Uh, a, a new Rasmussen poll that actually just came out today was very interesting. It shows that in a head-to-head -head rematch between Biden and Trump, if the election were held today, yeah. Trump would beat Biden by double digits. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Christine, and also, Christine, that, that's people a, are That's people a, are a fair election. Yeah, that's, that's a fair a, election. That's right. if a fair election is held. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it were a fair election. And right. as many as I think it was 56 percent of voters do not want to see Biden running again. And then there's also the question is, of, is he even going to be alive? Because <laughs> you know, yeah, he's getting kind of yeah. old. You think? So. And I think uh, one more comment about him. He t he's, he's releasing some of the extra gasoline that President Trump topped off before he left office. And it seems that uh, we can thank President Trump because the gas prices that are still going up might at least stabilize because of what Trump did, not what Biden did. I don't. I just want to give credit where it's due. Am I onto something? No, I think you're right. And another poll that just came out today shows, because of the rising gas prices, rising food prices, inflation. Yeah, all that. Um, you know, I mean, prices really are going up for Americans everywhere. Biden now has the lowest approval rating from an NPR Marist poll. Wow. So people everywhere are very upset with him. They should be. And of course, you've got the let's go Brandon Chance kind of sweeping the nation now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Chris, let, let me ask you another question just to, just to change gears a little bit. What do, what do you think is going to happen with uh, Daryl Brooks? Do you think that he's going to get his just desserts? Or do you think uh, political correctness is going to kick in? We're going to get another uh, George Soros prosecutor. They're going to be soft on him. Maybe send him to a state hospital. I mean, th what this guy did was monstrous. This guy's a serial killer because the definition of a serial killer is killing four or more people. He's killed six. So he's a serial killer or a mass murderer. That's the definition for more people. Do you think it's extremely you know, yeah, it is but, extremely but, sad. We also know and this is something the media won't talk about is he was a Black Lives Matter activist. We brought that up uh, in our broadcast. Okay, I know he was I know he was posting Black Lives Matter, yep. but now you see, he was an activist, that's right? right? Okay, that's, well, that's what, Yeah. I should wow. clarify, he promoted Black Lives Matter, he but he was also a sex offender. He'd been in prison we, before, we he'd been today. released. Yes. Um, and obviously we know the latest fatality is this you know, poor eight-year-old right. boy. So to answer your question, I do believe that he will be put away for murder, but here's the thing. I think the media, and they're already doing this, yeah. they will, in a sense, try to rationalize or justify his anger saying, well, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse was let off and he's a so-called white supremacist and racist. Therefore, we can understand his anger. For I think that's what the media is going to try to do. Yeah. Christine, no. since you're a lawyer, let me ask you a question. I think the Kyle uh, Rittenhouse verdict was was completely just and spot on. I think justice was I think Lady Justice was smiling upon uh, a common sense verdict by the by the jury. Uh, the Second Amendment was protected. Self-defense was protected. Yep. What's your take as a lawyer? As no, I think that's absolutely obvious. I think anyone with common sense and with eyes to see would come to the same conclusion. And all I can say is thank God that there was video there. Yeah. Because if there was not oh. video proving that this was self-defense, I think he would have been locked up I for a very totally long time. Yeah, he and would. on top of it, 
the poor kid, you know, the poor kid, he was just a kid at the time. He's fighting for his life. I, I had a friend actually say to me, um, he demonstrated tremendous self-control in that moment because if it had been my friend, he's like 17 people would have been dead that day. <laughs> you know, this kid exercised great self-control. Yeah. You know, and only shot at the people who clearly seemed to want to come and kill him. So uh, it was. It was a guy. Was almost in tears when I when I saw the not guilty verdicts come out. I have not. So, heard, uh, yeah, I've not heard anybody use the catechism on this. But the catechism says in self defense you use proportionate measures. I think that's exactly what he used, proportionate measures to stop the aggressor. He did. And that was obvious. I think any person of goodwill and good intention could see that that's exactly what happened. But unfortunately, a lot of people in mainstream media are not of goodwill and they don't have good intent. And so they continue to paint him, slander him as a racist and white supremacist. Amen. So, you know, I'm just glad that he's he's out free now. So, yep. well said. Yes. How can people continue to watch your news? Tell us again when it's on, how they can do that, please. Uh, Catholic Info Hour is on every weekday, mm -hmm. 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at churchmilton.com. And also, kind of related to you guys in Baltimore, all of our Baltimore talks are now up on the site. So people who maybe missed the live stream oh, yeah. can now come to our site and watch all of the talks, especially both of yours. Very excellent talk there. <laughs> all right. Well, we're Christine, just... thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. Uh, uh, and uh... Oh, yeah. We thank and thank you for the partnership of sharing the gospel and exposing error with truth. To me, uh, you know, we just talked about the gospel for today's mass about being persecuted. I'll tell you what, I don't know any more of another group that's going to be persecuted than church militant for speaking up the truth in a time when it's not politically correct. I want to thank you publicly for what you guys do. Thank you, too, as well. Please pray for us. Amen. Amen. You guys do great work. Thanks so much. God, God bless you. you. God bless.